Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing something a bit different. Um, a few viewers had actually reached out to me very recently, and they had wanted me to do some consulting work for them. And this is something I normally do either in person or on the phone. Um, you know, either I, I drive out to their location or their residence, or you know, maybe we do this on Skype. This time around, uh, these two individuals wanted me to do this um, through email. So they sent me all their information, all their background information, what it is that they want, um, what they have questions on. And then now I'm going to respond in this video because they were so nice to let me showcase the consulting work that I, I am offering for people in a video format. So this is kind of a, a way of uh, promoting the consulting work, but also I want this information to be available to you guys. Um, you know, if I'm helping out these people who are actually paying for it, um, it's just nice enough for them to let everybody else in on the advice. And um, I think it's a really nice thing that they're doing, obviously, but also it's awesome that I can then show you guys as well um, the pieces of advice that I'm giving out to people. So if you're interested in this, and I, you know, I don't want to make this too promotional, but uh, you go to the website, figboss.com. We just renamed it. We're going to come out with some new logos, different things. We're actually going to change up this consulting page here. Uh, but this is how you contact me if you want to get some consulting work done. You know, regardless of if it's on a fig orchard or, or starting a fig orchard or just figs in general, we also have helped plenty of people so far on just growing food in their backyard. Um, just growing food in general. Maybe it's on a balcony, you know, you name it. Um, so if you're interested, again, just go to this website here. It's in the description of the video. It's on our website. Um, we are going to change this up, like I said, because I think this is a bit outdated here, this little contact form at the bottom of the site. Also, it's just worth noting, if you want to subscribe to our blog, you just put in your email address here and you'll get notified every time the blog is updated. Um, so anyway, on to the consulting work now. Um, so let's let's see here. Okay, so here's the document um, that I was sent. It says, hi Ross, uh, thanks for your patience. Here's some general background information. Um, I'm originally from London, but now he lives in California, in Manhattan Beach, which uh, as he says is just south of the uh, LAX airport. Um, but he's really close to the ocean um, and it's really coastal and he says he gets a fair bit of morning mist, slightly more humidity and cooler temperatures than further inland. He says he's 10B and what this means to me, for those of you guys who don't really know and maybe I don't have the biggest or the best understanding of this, but along the coast of California, especially if you're really close to the water, it's actually quite cool and it's really mild. It's mild in the wintertime and it's mild in the summertime. So he lives, even though he's in 10B, which you would, you could say, all right, wow, 10B, that's awesome. You could probably grow like all kinds of tropical fruits where he's at. Um, the difference is he doesn't really get the warmth in the, the summer that maybe even I do, or even people in California that are more inland. In fact, it's quite a big difference, even just three, five, 10 miles inland. Um, and there's so many different elevations in, um, in California. And, you know, it's just a huge difference in, in microclimates that you really get very, excuse me, very different weather. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong here, Pete, but I, my understanding is that you don't really get the warmest weather in the summer. And it says right here, we had what seemed like a particularly long cool period this year. Um, he says, you don't have, you probably don't have much sympathy for me because he lives in Southern California, but um, it really didn't uh, warm up. It wasn't really uh, until July that it began to warm up where he's at. And he says some of his citrus flowered heavily in February, but then dropped just about all the baby fruits. They're reflowering now. And then he says that, we may have only had a couple days over 90. So that's that's pretty in, incredible. That's a really big difference here and that's something really too um, important to keep in consideration. 
He also says that all the figs he's trying to grow were purchased locally from a um, a nursery, either in one gallon or five gallon pots. Once uh, two are from Mon Monrovia, and the other two are from this local nursery called Armstrong. He says they're solid nurseries. They're all planted in good quality potting mix with good drainage. There's a layer of wood chips on top. He mixed in additionally extra perlite, vermiculite, different things to add in some drainage. He's been pretty uh, generous with fertilizer um, because he says they're in smart pots. He also uses Job's organic uh, tomato fertilizer, but he's given them an occasional boost of worm tea, kelp, and fish emulsion and uh, and bat guano. So it seems like Pete here is quite um, on the organic train, and most of the the uh, different fertilizers and micronutrients that he's giving his trees are organic. Um, I also gave them a mix of diatomaceous earth, worm castings, and iron. Fairly recently, after watching one of your videos, they have had also had compost occasionally, including some homemade worm castings. Um, so the way that I'm understanding this from his trees is that Pete is really taking care of his trees. Um, in fact, maybe he's over, he's, maybe he's taking care of them too much. Um, now, the issue with a lot of the organic fertilizers when it comes to our container figs is that they just take a long time to break down. And if they don't have enough time or the right temperature, they really just don't do a whole lot. So I think um, maybe if the temperatures are quite cold, as Pete was saying, or maybe they just weren't warm enough, maybe that process of breaking all this down uh, wasn't really happening. And maybe uh, it's possible, and I, I don't know, we're going to look at photos here in a minute, but it's possible that his trees just weren't getting the fertilizer that they need, the food that they need. Um, even though you know he's got them in good soil, the soil really isn't enough for most for most for the most part to keep these trees, you know, putting out really strong growth and then of course fruit. So it can work. I'm not gonna lie. I I have friends that that actually do it and grow all their um, their figs in in, uh, in containers that also ha use only um, organic materials, organic fertilizer. But um, you know, it's just a it's just a whole different aspect, a whole different world if you're growing them with synthetic fertilizer. So um, we're going to just have to keep that in mind here a bit further down. He's got two trees here that he's mentioning, Black Mission and Aishia. Both of these were bought and repotted last year, seem to be doing pretty well. Um, however, the fruit on both has really slowed um, to develop on both of them, and the fruit on the Black Mission is shriveled, and he actually thinks he's not going to get fruit off both of them. The leaves are very dry and crispy. Um, I would also like to get a few additional feet of growth on these, as well as fixing the fruit issue. Then his next tree here is the Black Jack Fig. This was once bought last winter in a dormant state and was like a single, it was just a single stem whip. Um, there has been minimal branching and it's carrying probably the best looking fruit of all four, but the leaves are small, curly, crispy. It doesn't seem like it wants to grow outwards at all. I don't know why he's not getting, he doesn't know why he's not getting any significant branching, uh, which obviously limits the scope for fruit, uh, for fruiting. Um, he tried pinching the top six weeks ago, but nothing really sprouted out of the trunk other than a few leaves. Um, now he says his last tree here is the tiger panache fig. Uh, although he bought it last winter, or also he bought it last winter, this one looks like a pitchfork. Um, you'll see it. It also was the first to start to leaf, leaf out, and there's been essentially no branching, which has really limited fruit growth. Um, he has three or four figs on it that are clearly not ready to be harvested, but they now appear to be deteriorating rather than getting riper. There's about four to five feet of the trunk before the top of the canopy. I love to get some branching in those lower areas to maximize fruit growth capacity. And then let's go through these photos here. I guess we can start with the, the tiger fig as we just looked at it or just talked about it. There it's got all that growth. It's got the branching up top. You can see the figs forming here, which from this view actually don't look too bad. Um, in fact, the leaves don't look too bad either. Um, you can see some crispiness here. They're also curling inwards. Um, 
yeah, it looks like a fig that's pretty much grown in a very dry, um, a dry and very sunny climate. It looks uh, a bit beat up. You know, the the trunk really is pretty exposed. Unfortunately, there's not much of a leaf canopy here to speak of. Um, you know, his leaves are probably taking a beating at this point, and. Uh, especially if the tree is not growing, eventually these leaves start to deteriorate. So it's kind of only a matter of time um, that a lot of your leaves just start looking worse. And I'm not entirely sure, you know, I'm not physically there, but it, and I'm not physically talking to Pete either. But it seems like to me originally that he had some kind of issue with his watering. And that's a big problem if you're not watering um, well and you're not having the right moisture content in your soil regardless if it's too much or too little uh, you're gonna have issues over time and I checked with Pete he uh, I actually had asked him a couple days ago uh, if he was watering well what his watering was like and he says he's doing all the right things and it sounds like he's doing all the right things so I don't think it's water I think it's just where he's at he just has a lot of sun um the tree hasn't really grown all that much the leaves don't really look all that great um what's really strange to me and i want to go back to what he said here first to start leafing out but there's been essentially no branching what's very strange to me about this tree is that this wood here looks like one-year-old wood but is this new wood he doesn't actually say here also bought it last winter this one looks like a pitchfork so I'm assuming this one was a pitchfork before he got it so he bought it like a pitchfork and then since the tree woke up and it was the first one to wake up has only really put out very few leaves on the top of these branches here and it it doesn't it has a pretty decent branching even though it doesn't really come up here uh, or it comes up really high before it starts branching he does have some pretty at, at least some pretty decent branching i count looks like five branches here um but it's very strange because this is the growth that he's essentially gotten this year. It looks like maybe two or three inches of growth on all the tips. Unless, of course, this is also new. But I don't think it's new because it looks a bit older and also all the leaves are missing. So if all the leaves are missing, either they fell off, which I think is unlikely. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that his tree just didn't grow at all which is extremely strange because of all the things that he's saying in his little thing here that he's feeding them well, he's giving them all kinds of organic materials, he's watering them well, as he, he told me. It definitely seems like it. Um, so it's just very, very strange to me that uh, his tree has not grown. Okay, so here's what I would say, some things that Pete should try here because... If my tree has only grown three inches in the entire year, I think the first thing you got to look at is food. And if you're not feeding it well, you're not feeding it enough, um, these trees just don't grow. They legitimately do not grow. I had a, a tree in a prior year that I just completely forgot to fertilize. I had fertilized every single pot. I know at the time I was using the slow release fertilizer. Uh, which you put that on top of the soil and you can mix it in and that stuff lasts for like three to six months and it just slow releases every time you feed the pot every time you water the pots it slow releases that fertilizer into the soil but the one tree that I forgot to fertilize um, didn't grow at all it barely grew and it didn't fruit and it just sat there and I thought something was wrong with the tree until I finally realized probably like sometime around September, even October, that I just never fed it. I never gave it the fertilizer that it needed that all the other trees were getting. So that's a possibility that the food is just not working out. And I think that's the first thing you should look at. The second thing he should look at, which I would find really 
a bit shocking is that I would take the soil temperature of the um, of the roots or go take the temperature of the soil I'm sorry get yourself a thermometer Pete and take the temperature if the soil temperatures are 90 or over 90 let's say 90 to 95 100 105 your trees are just not going to grow very well and I would say around 95 is probably that magic number that you're not going to get any growth at all in fact even here where you would think that we're just not really warm in Pennsylvania but we get warm in the summer and it's warm enough with black pots on a patio and I don't even get sun all day but just having black pots on the patio my figs stopped growing the first year that I started growing figs that first summer and I that's how I kind of actually got into the fig community was I was looking around for the answer why is my tree not growing so I joined figs for fun and I, I found all these crazy people and then there was this one guy who gave me the right answer and essentially is that the soil is just too warm and the second I added on mulch and quite a bit of mulch the soil cooled down and then the trees started growing another thing he could do because his pots here we didn't look at all the photos just yet but you can see all the pots here are black they're fabric they also probably dry out a bit quicker because they are excuse me they are fabric um, because they're black they're warming up the sides of the the soil a lot quicker and a lot more so I would just recommend Pete, if the soil temperature is above 95, and I actually think this is probably your answer here, um, your trees are just not going to grow. And that's why you're really not getting the growth you're looking for right now. Um, it's just too warm. I know you got the mulch on there, but I would not have black pots in California. I just wouldn't do it. Um, maybe if I lived in your coastal climate as, as you do, I would maybe start thinking otherwise and be like, okay, I should have black pots, but it's hard to say. I don't know how much sunlight hours you get. I don't know what the temperature is of the soil, but certainly it's worth considering. And what you can do instead of just getting, um, you know, it definitely looks like you got enough mulch on there, especially this tree over here. This looks like a jujube or something, but these other ones look like they probably don't have that much mulch. Um, I think it's worth a shot just take the soil temperature if it's too warm add some mulch the other alternative you can do is cover the sides with tin foil or cover the sides with some sort of reflective material put the roots uh, put the pots somewhere that's a bit shaded you know keep the keep the trees in the sunlight the tops but the the roots in the in the shade um, if that's possible so I think that's honestly my best guess is that the the temperature is too warm also I don't think the fertilizer is really working out now there's a third option here and the third option is that these trees just suck um, and there's a big debate it's not really a big debate but there's a lot of theories out there there's a lot of people who have different theories on this I'm looking at all your trees right now Pete every single one of them barely grew barely put out any growth I mean this is like two inches or one inches of growth you know this is like this is nothing um, oh this is option number four so we're gonna let's skip over three real quick on this particular fig by the way is scale that looks like scale to me if your trees have scale which if this tree has scale and it comes from a nursery most of the trees at nurseries have scale if you have a really bad scale infestation your trees just won't grow at all it happened to me last year five or six years into growing figs just learned that if you get too much scale on your trees it really is a bad thing so this is what scale is right here and I don't know if you have any idea what scale is but just a quick little look here there's many different forms of what it looks like at different stages of adulthood and they kinda look like um, it's really disgusting they look like this at first 
then they turn black or brown and then they turn into what exactly is looking like right here is a hardened um, fully black form of scale and there's probably I think there's also probably different species of scale so that could be in different colors as well but that's what you're looking for in your trees if this is on your trees you need to get rid of it you can either um, take it off with your hands get some gloves and rub up rub all the bark take your hands all up and down the bark all over the tree even the trunk and just try to get rid of as much scale as you can check the leaves as well you didn't give me a close-up on the leaves sometimes scales on the bottom of the leaves usually it's around the veins on the figs also on the front of the leaves um, and it also scale really loves not only they like nurseries because all the plants are so close together um, but there are usually a lot of nurseries just have tons of pests because their plants are grown in an environment that's just really not conducive for growing plants or I should say these trees and these plants are in pots for such a long time and they get stressed and they get attacked by pests they're an easy an easy uh, target for pest damage and then you've got them in these in these locations for so long in these pots for so long it just gets worse and they just sit there and a lot of these nurseries don't really want their trees to grow they're just trying to keep them alive they're trying to maintain them keep them honestly in this crappy state of just keeping them along and uh, it's a bit sad and that's not really their goal in their minds but that's really what's happening is that they're growing them out or somebody's growing them out and then shipping them to them then they're just sitting there and they're just maintaining them they're not really trying to make them look any nicer by having any much more new growth because then they have to feed all these trees they really would have to water them they'd have to really be on top of it and just a large-scale nursery is just not going to be able to do that so then they they also have these pests now because these trees were grown from, you know, in an area with all the pests to begin with. They're more susceptible to the pests and it's very likely I think you have some pretty bad scale damage. Now, to get rid of scale, um, I would just recommend some um, horticultural oil. Anything that's going to smother them. I think also, um, uh, what's that stuff called neem oil I think will also take care of it there's all kinds of organic materials that you can use to get rid of scale just type it in here um, additionally if you can just rub them off with your hand all up and down the bark they'll go away but it's really a good idea to drench your tree with whatever this material is that you're gonna use neem horticultural oil um, do you just have to make sure whenever you're using those products that it's the right temperature outside sometimes you can't use them um, when it's too warm so just read the label on that also um, the fourth option here of why your trees look so horrible uh, no offense Pete but um, we kind of already touched on is that they're in this nursery environment for so long and they just never really got the food and they've been sitting there for so long they haven't been growing they've been kind of stagnating they've kind of just been sad for a long time and then the tree takes a really long time after that to kind of wake up out of that process it's not like an instant fix because the tree has just been in a crappy state for so long being in a small pot only getting so much water having just st completely sterile potting soil by the way um, they really just take a bit to get going and that's just a big deal you know sometimes um, you might get lucky and they might come out of that a bit quicker especially if you use something that's inorganic right if you give them the fast the quick release fertilizer that's inorganic that's like instant and your tree might actually show some life right away um, but you know with these trees coming from these nurseries it's really likely that they just are not getting the treatment and haven't been getting the treatment that they needed and even though you're doing all the nice things and all the good things it just is possible that uh, they're kind of stuck in this mode for a bit um, additionally there's one other thought here is that um, and this is kind of the big theory the big little 
topic of controversy in the in in growing figs is that some fig growers believe that when your tree is grown at a really healthy state and you can kind of see it on this tree right here right in here is like a really close node spacing those really close nodes is an indicator of a lack of fertilizer lack of water lack of new soil just a lack of nutrients and water um there's people who believe that when you have these really close node spacings like that, it really slows down the tree. And believe it or not, even Monster at Ponds, the leading expert on figs that currently exists in many people's opinion, has mentioned in his book that at around year 30, it's a good idea to start doing some rejuvenation pruning on your trees and I actually did this on one of my trees this year my planera maybe you saw that in a fig tour that we did we did a video of a tour showing you guys all the figs and planera was one that just really didn't grow very well and it's never really grown very well I started it from cutting and people believe that if you start them from cutting get them off to a really healthy state with really wide node spacing they just produce healthier more vigorous more productive trees and not only that, but I think my planera tree really didn't get off to a great start from cutting. And every year it just hasn't really performed well. It had scale last year. This year I thought, okay, well, it's got no scale. It's finally got the right start to the season. It should be doing fine. It didn't work out. The growth wasn't what I expected. It didn't put out the fruit that I was hoping for. So what did I do? I took some advice from some people in the fig community, but also from Ponds, Monster at Ponds, and he talks about, like I said, rejuvenation pruning. So what you can do, believe it or not, and this is very radical, okay? I'm not suggesting you do this, but this is another option in that it's possible that innately your tree is just not very healthy and never really will be that healthy. If that's the case, maybe a couple years from now and you've realized that this tree just isn't doing well it's time to kind of start over either you air layer it you propagate it again you can take it and graft it onto something that's more vigorous and more healthy or you can do this rejuvenation pruning where you just chop the whole thing all the way down to the base and then you try to get a new shoot that comes up from the base a lower point on the trunk don't cut out the entire trunk Maybe you can get a shoot from the roots. A lot of times these figs in my climate when it's so cold and they get hit with the cold in the winter time and then they get killed, they then in the following year send up these really vigorous suckers, really vigorous that are extremely healthy, almost pristine, look like they're like newborn babies. <clears throat> and as a result those new limbs that come up are super healthy and that's kind of exactly what you're trying to do with this tree if and in if indeed everything I just said I just gave you four different options of why your trees are not doing well if it's none of those four reasons this could be your next best bet and maybe it works maybe the the solutions I gave you work for let's say three of the four trees and then the fourth one just never really seems to do all that hot that could be the um, solution is that cutting it down to the base, getting a new, very vigorous shoot, and then establishing that trunk once again, and then establishing that branching. I mean, it's worth considering. Um, not saying that you should do that just yet, but uh, it's definitely something you should consider. Um, okay, so we looked at Panache, and that kind of really looks at all the other trees as well, because they all really look the same to me. They don't really look that healthy um now it does look like you're watering quite well in fact it looks like you're watering too much because the trunk on this one here is very wet you don't want the trunks of these trees wet constantly that could lead to some rot maybe it's just a very temporary thing i'm not sure but it's very difficult to tell from this photo what's exactly happening here but don't let this get too wet maybe your your drip irrigation here is getting this trunk wet uh, try to avoid that. Also, your soil looks very sandy. And it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of mulch on here. And because it's so sandy, it probably doesn't have that much nutrients in it. Maybe that's just the micronutrients you put on top. 
Um, I don't know what your potting soil is made of, but that, you know, again, the food, like I said, the food is a big thing. The soil and the food. If you're not using those two right ingredients correctly, you know, that's a whole big reason why these trees cannot be growing. But like I said, just make sure that this isn't being um, completely wet all the time. You could rot the bark, which then will kill the tree. Uh, I don't have to re-sprout from a lower point on the roots. Uh, but this tree has a nice structure, this here. And this is, which one is this? Um, this is your mission tree, I think. Yeah, so uh, this guy looks great. I like the shape. However, he has so many of these really thin branches that have just formed that I don't recommend that. I would, I would, I would recommend, you know, trying to thin out this really thin stuff that's really old, like this branch here. This is going to be very unproductive for you. Like I said, the rejuvenation pruning over time, thirty years, as Pond said, these trees just don't do nearly as well. So maybe this tree needs some rejuvenation as well. And that's what I'm saying. Come in here take out these really thin you know very dark gray um, limbs that just look like they're doing absolutely nothing thin that out a little bit and the ideal time to do this would be during dormancy but I'm not entirely sure if you have a dormancy process do these trees indeed drop leaves if they do wait till they've dropped their leaves you know wait till it's in February um, to do this however it's not a bad idea to start now getting rid of, I mean, this limb right here, as an example, is doing nothing for your tree. It's got one leaf on it. So it might just be a good idea to just take this out now. And that's going to focus the sugars into different, more important locations on the tree, right? Um, not obviously the most necessary thing to do now, but it's certainly something you should do when this tree goes dormant or at least when the tree is slowed down, there's no fruit on it anymore. Um, looking at this tree though, the leaves don't look too great. And I think this honestly is just a, it's just deterioration. Um, it looks like you may have actually some rust on here, which is a bit strange. This looks like maybe just some wear and tear in here. This is definitely wear and tear. Maybe a little bit of the fig mosaic virus and how that some of this is yellow and some of this is mottled. That's just a sign of in, of just not having the right nutrients. Um, having a tree that's been stuck in a pot in poor conditions for a very long time, that's just a sign, right? The fig mosaic virus comes out when you, um, when you have an unhealthy tree. This leaf doesn't look too great. Try not to spray the leaves with, with any water. You know, I don't know that mist of course that you mentioned that comes in in the morning um, that certainly could be really deteriorating the the um, and making some of the edges here brown maybe if that is rust I can't exactly tell it could be sun damage it could just be you know just a natural thing that happens over time to these leaves you know you don't have any fresh leaves on here that's like a big thing is that these leaves I imagine have been on the tree since February or since since March um, so you know March till August that's five months of just them in the elements it also looks like they've been sprayed with something um, I don't know what that is but I'm sure that's not the biggest issue the other additional thing that could be happening here I guess is the the salty air and I haven't experienced it myself some people have claimed that the salty air doesn't some varieties don't do well with the salty air but I was just down at the Jersey Shore at my parents place there um, and they were showing me their tree or I was looking at their tree that we planted I think three summer this is the third summer of it and it's right by the bay. I mean, we're walk. You know, you're literally. Um, I don't know, 300 feet from the bay. Um, so 300 feet from the water. It's very salty air. A lot of the trees in the neighborhood in the area really have all kinds of weird things going on with them because of the salty air. Figs I haven't noticed really have a big issue with it, and people have claimed that they do. But I'm going to go ahead and say that they don't. And 
but it is possible that the salty air could be messing with specific varieties especially if these trees by the way are just not healthy right if they're not healthy they're not going to deal with this as well as if they were healthy you know um okay so on to the dropping though of why this is happening this is of course happening because your trees are not healthy i mean that's one that's one reason right there um two this is either from a lack of water that's the most likely case or it could be too much water in that your roots are then rotting and then everything on top is coming off and that's usually the first thing to go is that if you have root rot too much water your soil's too heavy too much care um the figs will start dropping off the tree that's usually the first thing and that's not always but i find that if you overwater it that's the first thing to go if you underwater it a lot of times the first thing to go is some leaves so um that's something to consider right there. That may help you out. Um, but other than that, I just think the tree is rejecting it. I think that the tree, because it's not healthy, doesn't have enough sap flow in these branches to then get to the necessary points in the tree to keep this thing healthy and vigorous and fruiting. You just have too many, you have too many fruits on the tree that the tree can support. It's just a it's just a fact, right? You have very few leaves. These leaves probably are not doing too much to produce sugars and carbohydrates. Those sugars and those carbohydrates are what go into these figs as well and help keep these figs healthy and also to help sweeten them. So eventually they'll fall off if you don't have enough sap flow. And this happens at various times in my season as well for various different reasons. Uh, if you have a sudden drop in temperature, um, you know, the sap flow can then obviously slow down if I'm not feeding them well enough. If I suddenly lose a whole bunch of leaves, well, then I have less photosynthesis, right? Which is then producing those carbohydrates, then producing less of that sap flow. Um, so this is really, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And you can see that they're getting these spots on them here. This could be from mites. Um, this is, in my opinion, though, the clearest sign of an unhealthy tree right here. When they get these little spots on them, this to me means the tree is just not really doing well. It just needs some time. It needs probably, honestly, a whole other year of it being really healthy. So if you can turn this around, get the growth that you want, um, this will be back in order next year. Can you solve this issue now on the mission tree? I think so, because there's still a lot of figs on here that are um, actually looking pretty good. So what you need to do is essentially get yourself all the things I just mentioned, get this thing back into a healthy state. As soon as you see new leaves forming, that's when you know your tree is in a, a positive state and things are going well. Um, I would say the leaves do indeed look a bit like a black mission but they don't so um i think it has a lot to do with the lack of vigor in your tree that could be changing these leaf patterns but i just wanted to confirm with you that this is or wasn't black mission i would say there's probably a 50 50 shot right now that this isn't black mission and in fact the figs don't really look like black mission either um maybe if i zoom in up here Yeah, it's hard to say, but anyway, worth noting. Here's the Aishia figs that we looked at. And again, the Aishia has, definitely has scale on it right here. These figs don't look bad. This is normal. And I don't know if you know this, but you did complain about the figs not really doing anything. They don't really do anything for... A while right so what happens is they form they start out real small actually like the size of the scale here they start out like pea sized and then it takes about 30 days for them to get to the next size up once they get to that next size up they sit there at that size they sit there do and do nothing for another 30 days and then they sit there at that size for another 30 days until 90 days have passed and then the fig starts to swell um, 
and then becomes ripe. So on those 30 days, you really only see maybe like five days in the beginning or 10 days in the beginning, right? So there's a process in the beginning where it goes from pea-sized to the right size, and then it sits there, and then another 30 days later, it'll expand again to the next size up, but it only happens, that whole process only happens on one or two days. Like it happens almost overnight. So you don't even almost, you don't even really almost see it unless you're watching them every day and really closely observing. And then the same thing happens again 30 days later. So the whole process can look like nothing's happening, but in reality, it's actually doing its thing. And that's this is just how it works. There's no way around it. Unhealthy tree, healthy tree, they all have to go through the same thing of that whole stagnation period of doing nothing. Um, again, this tree doesn't look that healthy with in terms of its growth. I mean, it actually does look quite sad. And you can tell that this wood right here is probably three years old at this point. So this is the, let's see, this is the new growth. This is one year old. This is the new growth here. This is two years old. This is probably three years old, this growth here, which means it's been in that pot, whatever, wherever you got it from, it's been in that pot for a long time. And this down here may even be four years old. So um, that just goes to show you how really how long this tree actually has been in the pot and kind of to go back to that other point I was making. Um, but yeah, it's the same story with this tree, although it does look a bit healthier um, in terms of the growth that it has put out. And the reason for that is that there's less growth points because you have less growth points, like this little weird thing here, you know, this little weird point of growth, this little weird point of growth, because there's fewer of them, you have f stronger and thicker growth. We talk a lot about that and about thinning out these branches. So that's what I'm saying. Come in here on your black mission tree and really thin out the really weird straggly like looking stuff. You know, if you want this thing to, to also branch out at a lower point like this right here, what you can do is come in there, come in um, to your tree. I don't have a knife in front of me, but take your knife and let's say that this is the bark here. Well, I, maybe I can zoom in. This is probably a better idea. So come in here, this is the node right here. And let's say that this is a green node. It looks like a very healthy node. It's hard to tell from the photo. But what you're gonna do is come in here with a knife and score the bark. You're gonna notch it. It's called notching. Look this up. Maybe we can show you guys a visual here. So this is perfect right here. So here's the bud and this is like, uh, I don't know what this is, looks like an apple tree. And you have the bud right here. Right above that, we scored the bark, we notched it. And what's gonna happen is, this is gonna stop that auxin flow to reach this point. The auxin is at the top of the tree, which suppresses the lower growth. That's how all trees work. They have that hormone, auxin, in the tree. So if you can stop that auxin flow from reaching this bud, it will then start to grow. It will then start to leaf out. So this is one way of doing it, is cutting off, by making that cut into the bark, you're actually stopping that hormone from going into, into this bud and then suppressing that growth. So this is one way to do it. You can see here's another example right here. I would go a little bit, maybe a little bit deeper than this I'm sure there's a photo of a fig tree, how this is done. You can, actually this looks like a fig right here. Yeah, here it is. Um, but you can see exactly right here. So here's the cut and then here's now the new branch that comes out. And this works every time. Um, you're gonna have limited success with the amount of energy your tree has. So it's important to have, first off, the energy this is one way though to kind of help rejuvenate your tree, to help get healthier limbs. Once you get these healthy limbs that come out, 
it's probably a good idea to start cutting out the really ugly stuff, the really the stuff that really doesn't look good, that's not as healthy, and keep these new healthy shoots for the future. Um, so that's how you can get them to really branch out there. Um, okay. All right, so what were we talking about before this? Okay, we were talking about the growth here and why this doesn't look good. Um, the leaves on this tree actually don't look too bad. And again, I think it's just a matter of you, you know, these being quite old, there's some deterioration here. I wouldn't worry about it. it looks like there's probably some FMV down here because on the lower limbs, they just don't get that those nutrients um, as much. Uh, let's move on to the brown turkey now. You can see here's FMV right here. Again, just a sign of under um, not having enough nutrients. See these little this little limb right here? Like this isn't really doing much. You know what I mean? So if you cut out the number of these, this shoot will then be more vigorous. All right, so here I think now is the blackjack, which is really brown turkey. Um, it's really the same thing as Californian brown turkey. And this tree is doing actually, even though it looks sadder, <laughs> it looks a lot more sad, um, it's doing way better than your other trees because it's got this new growth. Yeah, this new growth doesn't look all that great um, in terms of the node spacing. So there's still a nutrient deficiency here that's very obvious. However, um, it is putting out new leaves, which is a really, really good sign. Um, and the figs look good. This tree looks good. Um, what you could do is cut off the top at a certain point. It, it, when these trees go dormant, this is another way to get this, this thing to start branching out a bit better. When these trees go dormant in February or they drop all their leaves or maybe there's just a slow period, like I said, just chop off the top and leave the branches, leave those little small branches that are coming out here, like there's one here and there's one here. This will then really get that branching a bit more pronounced. Um, you gotta cut out the central leader. The way that these nurseries had grown them is a central leader, which is essentially just a tree that grows straight up in the air like a stick, and this, the top of the stick remains, and then all these branches come off of that stick. That's how most trees grow in nature. Um, and that's not always the worst thing with figs, but they normally don't do that. They don't, there's no really such thing as a, a central leader with, with figs because they normally just develop a big crown of many central leaders, um, a big, thick, dense canopy. So, um, yeah, again, I just, just chop off the top. That's another way to get that branching to come in. And the dormancy process really helps with this, by the way. Is that once my trees go dormant and I make the pruning cuts during dormancy when they wake up from the spring it just puts out growth everywhere like all up and down the tree all over the place too many points actually that I have to come in here and thin out some of the new growth because I don't always want all those new growth points but again this tree looks way better without a doubt Pete um, All right, so I guess the other question that was not answered here is getting this these trees another two to three feet of growth, right? Um, let me make sure there's no other questions in here before we get to this. Um, okay, so we've talked about the fruit drop, the dry and crispy leaves. We answered that here. He wants additional... Uh, feet of growth uh, let's see here minimal branching we answered that um, okay and then here he's talking about the pitchfork and yeah he just wants better branching okay so we we pretty much answered most of your questions here Pete the last thing I want to mention to you is that we need to get, uh, if you want to get more growth, 
there was a bit of a trade-off that happens, and you you did mention this that you want f- you want a couple feet of growth, right? You don't want you don't want just one foot. Um, the trade-off here is that when we feed our trees a lot of nitrogen, they don't fruit nearly as much, and there's a nice little balance that has to happen in the beginning of the season, because that's when we really want to be feeding them. We don't really want to be feeding them now. Although your trees really don't look healthy at all, and I would recommend feeding them something to get them into that healthier state. Um, you really need to be on on it in the beginning of the spring, getting these trees their food, but you don't want to over-fertilize them nitrogen. It's, it's kind of difficult, but because you have so much organic material, you have compost, you have worm castings, you have even organic fertilizer. That's a lot of organic matter in the soil. There's usually too much of that. If there is too much of that, your tree just likes to grow and grow and grow and actually not fruit. So you kind of have this little trade-off that you want a lot of growth, but you also want fruit and you can't kind of get the both at the same time. So I would suggest this year, just giving them as much food as you can getting them as much growth as you can like i guess you're kind of already alluding to that that's what you want but then the following year kind of slow down that fertilizer once you realize how much fertilizer you can give them you got the fertilizer techniques down um slow that nitrogen down and don't give them nearly as much fertilizer um just so that you can make sure you get yourself some fruit you know it's uh it's very obvious that too much nitrogen will just completely limit and it's not just figs it's with pretty much every fruit tree if you want something to flower you want something to fruit too much nitrogen is going to stop that so um just a little word of advice there uh let's see um if you want your tree to grow a number of feet though i really would suggest switching to something synthetic and i know that's Probably, you know, I don't know if that's against what you believe, and I honestly grow everything organic in the ground. But in these pots, it's, it's just a totally different scenario. It's a totally different situation that you have to really give them a lot of food. And if you don't, they're just not going to do what you want. Um, so I really recommend that you get something that's synthetic. Uh, it doesn't even really matter what it is. I'm going to be honest. There's so many things out there on these fertilizers the most important thing is having something that has an NPK I mean that's it right like the stuff like your kelp uh, for the most part the stuff like the micronutrients like the the iron you said the diatomaceous earth you know all those little micronutrient type things those are great but they don't really help the tree put out the growth that you're looking for they put out they help the tree have those nutrients available so that the tree puts out really healthy growth. But to get the really the growth that you're looking for here, you're looking for something that's pretty good in nitrogen and something that's pretty good in, um, so there's nitrogen, potassium, and, oh my God, what, I'm blanking here on what the other one is. Okay, yeah. So what you want is, I'm sorry, you want the nitrogen and you want the potassium. The phosphorus is really going to help with that root growth. And I think that's really important because that's what you want these trees to do is this year in particular is to really get themselves established into their container. And they need to have healthy white roots. So we're going to get to that in a minute. That's the last thing I want to end on. But you're mostly looking for something that's high in nitrogen, high in the potassium, so the N and the K. The rest of it doesn't really matter because you're giving it such good fertilizer at this point, or such good micronutrients, I should say, that it doesn't really matter about the rest of the stuff. You already got that down pat. I'm sure you added in plenty at this point. Maybe you can add a bit more in here and there, but um, it's all about that nitrogen, all about the potassium. If you get those two numbers down at the right quantity, for the amount of soil you have and it gets there quickly it's going to put out that growth you want you got everything else right it seems like you got the water right um of course you need to have the right temperature right in the soil you need to get rid of that scale um this is all assuming you did everything i mentioned in the beginning of this video those five different things i mentioned 
you went through all of that feeding them is going to be number one key and it's very obvious by the way looking at your trees that they just don't have enough fertilizer it's obvious so you need to do something radically different with whatever you're giving them that tomato fertilizer that you're giving them is not enough either it's not enough or it's not breaking down or it's not doing the job that you want um, I would recommend for the organic fertilizer you need to add that stuff almost every month first off it takes about a month for it to really break down and be available to your tree um, also it's organic and because our trees our figs are in containers and they're such heavy feeders we really want to be feeding them with organic fertilizer like every month I would recommend going to the store if you want to remain organic get yourself the Alaska fish fertilizer this is really really good stuff it acts quickly you can get this at any you get this at like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, it smells horrible, okay? If you have lots of animals in the area, they'll come in and they may even dig up some of the soil and it's not gonna be pretty, but it looks like you had some fenced in area. And not all animals do this, by the way. You know, read about this, look look into it. This is honestly the, uh, the best stuff you can use or that's organic, that's gonna act quickly. And it's got a lot of micronutrients, right? It's from fish. You can use a lot of this stuff. And I have some friends that uh, really went crazy with this. I have a friend that, I don't know if he still does, but he used to get a turkey baster. I think it's a turkey baster. Um, yeah, he would fill like a whole turkey baster, a big one, and he would inject this thing, kind of like a giant needle uh, but a turkey baster and he would fill up the whole thing and just inject that into the root zone of the plant and his trees grow incredibly well so um you know that's my recommendation there if you want to really have your trees grow i would use this or something that's organic or inorganic and to be honest with you you could use literally anything i mean i'm telling you anything um, you could even use a foliar feed if you wanted to do that instead. Some foliar feed products I'd recommend or like some Dynagro stuff. Let's see here. Let's see the Dynagro products. Um, there's one in here that's really good okay so here it is right here foliage pro I mean this is the perfect one if you wanted to use this I'm pretty sure you can use this as a foliar feed you can also put it into um, I think into the soil yeah so you can mix it into your water your siphon or you can do it as a foliar so this is all really good stuff this is gonna act very quickly by the way the foliar feed is gonna act extremely quickly um, and the last thing I want to mention here is uh, you need to pay attention to these roots and I think it'd be to your benefit um, to an, uh, in all honesty is to take one of these trees out of its pot um, I know it's gonna be a pain and it may not actually be fully rooted in here and if you take this out of here you may actually damage some of the roots maybe you can even cut the bag off and take the, just take the bag off um i know that's a wasting a pot but what you really want to do is not damage the tree and you want to see what the roots look like you want to see the roots the root zone of this plant is going to tell everything if you're not seeing many white roots you're not seeing many yellow roots really the white roots are really what is key and you're just seeing brown and black and horrible looking roots that means your tree is really not doing well and it's not healthy and it's it's not um performing well and for and perfect in fact it may actually be rotting at that point if it's black um so that is a clear indicator right there if you're watering too much is by checking the roots and that's just something i'd really recommend with anybody that has a tree that just is going through a whole bunch of struggles um, that's another thing I'd recommend so in the beginning of those like f when I mentioned those first five things I think that's also something you should check into so that's a sixth thing right there if you do all those things 
that I mentioned in this video, uh, you're going to have a healthy tree without a doubt. Um, absolutely no doubt in my mind. So anyway, guys and Pete, uh, I want to thank you, Pete, for doing this, letting everybody in on the advice that I'm giving out. And I want to thank everybody else here for watching this one. Um, again, if you guys are interested in the consulting that I offer you guys, uh, again, it's right here on the website. You can contact me. We could talk about pricing and what it is that you guys want and you know all that different stuff. So, all right, everyone, take care, and we'll uh, we'll catch you all soon.